This comedian stars as Bill the Bartender on the hit CBC series, Mr. D. But I'll tell you something, you put him against me in a hopscotch competition and I'll show him a thing or two about a thing or two. Please welcome Darren Rose. Darren Rose. That's fun, man. It's great to be here. Tinder's a nightmare. Uh, I'm sure a bunch of you here are on Tinder. I don't, don't applaud if you're on Tinder. I won't ask you that, because you might be here with someone who doesn't know you're on Tinder. Uh, but if you're married, you have no idea about this dating culture we're dealing with, with apps and stuff. Because if you've been married more than 10 years, there's like a 50-50 chance I know how you met your wife or husband, because you probably met at a bar. Because that's how people used to meet. <laughs> Fans of bars. That's... <laughs> That's how people used to meet in this country. You would just go out for four, five, six beers, or seven or eight or nine beers, and then at two o'clock in the morning, you'd have a couple of shots of Jaeger, and then you'd point at somebody in the dark and say, good enough. <laughs> That's how people used to meet. Now we're on Tinder. This is the last line in desperation. We're at this point, we're actually asking our phones, like, Siri, could you introduce me to somebody? But now I'm like introspective because you know you're thinking about uh, about sort of what you did wrong in relationships and stuff. And uh, I realized something about myself when I'm dating is I think of that we're just two like we're like two countries spying on each other in the Cold War, where my goal is to collect as much information from her as possible while giving up nothing about myself or how I feel about her. Just <laughs> nothing. Like I've dated women who I thought about marrying, who when we broke up said. I didn't even think you liked me. <laughs> and not liked me like me, I didn't even think you liked having a conversation with me. And I was like, oh, so what you're saying is, I won. <laughs> I went to Thailand with my ex, and uh, this story isn't the reason she broke up with me. Uh, although, at the end of the story, you'd be like, yeah, that played into it, for sure. I had the worst thing happen to me that could happen in Thailand. We were staying on like a hut, like that was on sticks, like on the beach, like elevated. And we come in at like two o'clock in the morning. I walk into the bathroom and there's a snake on the floor in the bathroom that had come up through the toilet, just like in your nightmares. <laughs> and I freaked out. I was terrified, it's a snake. But also I wanted to be strong for her, like be a man for her. And so I closed the door and I was like, listen, I don't want to alarm you, but there's a snake on the floor in the bathroom. And she said, ooh, I want to see, and just went into the bathroom without asking any of the questions I would have asked, like how big was the snake, or did he look hungry, or should we just burn down this hut and buy new clothes in the morning? Nothing, she just went in, I'm looking around, like the snake wasn't that big, I'll be honest. The snake was maybe like this big in the thickness of my finger, but I don't know which ones are poisonous or which ones can just jump directly into your throat and kill you. <laughs> I didn't read all the guidebooks. So I'm looking around in the room trying to find something to kill the snake with, like a lamp or something, and she's like, you're an idiot. And she took a plastic beer cup and a magazine and said, I'll handle this. <laughs> Why is her voice deeper than mine now? She went over to the snake with the cup and just scooched the snake into the, into the cup with the magazine and put the magazine on top. Snake didn't even fit in the cup. His tail's hanging out. I'm like, what makes you think he can't get out of the cup? Like, he knows the way out. He just has to follow the rest of him. He's home free. I didn't sleep. I slept maybe like 11 seconds that night. Maybe 11 seconds. She doesn't care. She sleeps like a baby. Oh, she doesn't care. She, she talks in her sleep, though. And uh, I think I heard her say, I wish I wasn't the man in this relationship. <laughs> Which hurt, it hurt. And, and I know I could have fared better in this whole episode if I had just admitted I was afraid of snakes or said I was proud of her for being braver than me, but I didn't, I kept it a secret and she dumped me. So what I'm saying is, I won. <laughs> All right, Montreal, you guys are lovely, thank you so much.